All right, everyone. So now I'll talk about importing an L file into ZBrush. Uh, it's recommended that you use a .png file, but I'm going to tell you that all these file other versions also works. .psd file, .bmp file, and then uh, any image, other image, and probably .jpeg file will work as well. And then the as long as you have a image with a grayscale or transparency, why we recommend grayscale is that the when it's grayscale, you'll be able to look at the values. If it's a darker value, it means that it's pushing in the values in ZBrush. And then a, a brighter value, like a white in value, is pushing out the values in ZBrush. Okay, so uh, you can import in a colored version, but uh, if you use a colored picture, you will kind of lose the idea or you didn't know what you're doing. You don't know whether which part is pushing in or pushing out. So it's better that you go to a program like Photoshop, you make it black and white first, or grayscale with transparency. In this case, uh, this uh, Su H, uh, I mean, I mean the edge of this uh, picture is actually transparent. So you can tell that uh, it's useful because we will apply uh, creating just this silhouette onto our model. So it's useful, okay? So uh, we download this online using as a .png file and then it has transparency. So it's pretty useful. So you are recommended to do something similar as well. Okay. And then, uh, so first step you do is to click alpha and you press import at the bottom left corner. Browse to where your object is. And then uh, ideally you will be able to uh, browse to your own software, but just in case you want to uh, put in onto your own workspace so that every time you when you open up ZBrush, you will load it in. So you can also go to this folder. This folder is also where we uh, put in our custom settings on the first week. And then the, you are able to change this version depending on your ZBrush versions. And then it's just located inside the Z Startup. Okay, Z Startup will load all these brushes once the ZBrush starts up. And then you need to remember to put your brushes inside here because I believe there are other locations where ZBrush actually put other alphas. It can be a bit confusing, but uh, I'll always recommend us to put in the Z startup folder so that the alphas will be loaded directly when ZBrush starts up. Okay, so it makes sense. So our brushes is actually located also inside Z startup folder. That's why I have a Z startup folder with a lot of things under the custom settings that I uh, have passed to you guys. So, uh, yeah, so if you follow this folder, you will be able to uh, copy your alpha to there if you want to. If, uh, let's say, you're using the alpha a lot of times, every single time you open up ZBrush, you think of using this alpha. So why not put that alpha into your default settings and then you will have it every time. Okay. So anyway, once you bring in, you have the alpha over here and then you can just uh, use a drag and untangle and then drag it out. So it will look like this depending on the focus shift that you have. Okay, so let's try it out in uh, ZBrush. Okay, ZBrush, I'll just open up a cube. Notice that the uh, cube, uh, the file name in front doesn't have a DynaMesh. So it means that it is a subdivision. So other objects that say it's a DynaMesh, is actually using DynaMesh to create the model. So all these are actually using uh, DynaMesh. So those without, it's actually a subdivision model. So two different types of modeling in ZBrush, as I mentioned before. So as a subdivision model, we can look at the geometry and then it has subdivision level. So I'll just press Ctrl D a few times to add points to this. Ctrl D, Ctrl D, Ctrl D. So I just want to go up to uh, 1.5 million points. Okay. So we can also go up and down the subdivision level. So we can see the shortcut is Shift D. Go down. Go up is the D button. Okay, so uh, just so you know a little bit more about subdivision in case you forgot. So uh, we just want to have enough points to uh, play with our importing of our alphas. So I'll just press number 8 brush and uh, start importing my alpha. If you want to use the default settings, you can also just locate your clay brush, change to drag rectangle and then import in your brush. Okay. Anyway, go to under alphas, bottom left corner, import import to where my folder is located just now. So under this week, there's a folder called alpha to import that I've shared with you guys, uh, load it in. So in the, my Windows Explorer, what I like to do is I'll always right click and copy the path and then I'll paste my path directly on top. I prefer to browse like this most of the time. I'm more used to browsing in Windows Explorer. I don't know about you. So that's why I do a lot of copy and pasting of directories like this. Okay, so I'll just choose my PNG file. I can also do a PSD file to show you later. So PNG file looks like this. So I've loaded it in. 
so I can see the alpha is there on my alpha channel and I can just drag it out press X to off my symmetry drag it out okay so when I drag it out I want to push from the bottom to the top so it kind of enlarges like this bottom to top okay so if I want it to be a really hard edge my focus shift should be harder is minus 96 right now so you can tell it's quite a big difference and now we are at 1.5 million points so that's why we are able to create quite a high res uh, detailed image of the model okay so obviously if you go even higher it will be even more detailed okay if we change the focus shift to the other direction it will kind of be just really small we can't even see it anymore so I'll just put at 30 I guess Okay, so it's becoming really hard to bring it out. Okay, so this uh, center one is focus shift minus 99. This one is 30. And this one is 0. So you can tell the focus shift really makes a difference. Minus 99. This one is 30. So the focus shift over here really makes a difference to how our alphas is being created. Okay. So just want to try again with uh, .psd file. So the alpha that we created, I'll just import the .psd again. So this .psd, the difference is, I guess the background, I didn't change it. It's still white in color and there's a black and white text over there. So let's try it out. So I'll bring it out. Okay, so this is minus 38. I mean, uh, this is plus 38 focus shift. The alpha looks like this is minus 93 the alpha looks like this haha <laughs> okay so i should probably save as a transparency in the photoshop so that i don't have this edge over here but uh, just so you can see the psd file i can bring in all the same in uh, zbrush but keep your file size small guys okay don't bring in a hundred layers psd file into zbrush i'm sure you will lag your file somehow so uh, work efficiently optimize your workflow uh, this is our PSD file that is being loaded and then uh, if you want to see the P PNG file, it looks like this. Okay, so I uh, hope you understand more about importing alpha in this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.